Welcome to the tutorial of the new OSBA uh, online system to update your roster information. Uh, this system replaces the previous system which forced you to go through about seven steps uh, to update any information and allows you to uh, update anything from contact information to replace your superintendent in our files and keep your information up to date with the Ohio School Boards Association. So let's jump right into how we access and use the new system. First of all, uh, everything is tied to your login. Uh, your, if you're not the treasurer, your district treasurer will need to be the first one to log in and access the system. After that, the treasurer does have the ability to designate someone else in the district as an editor. Once that designation is set, that other person can log in using their own username and password and go ahead and manage the district profiles, board members, uh, superintendent treasurer and uh, anyone else that is on file with OSBA in your district. To get started we click the login button at the top of the screen. If this is your first time logging in you'll notice there's a first time login and a forgot password link. Uh, clicking one of those simply takes you to this screen. You enter in your email address and you will be sent a link to set a password. Once that's done, a very easy step, you can then log in. So we're going to log in and we're using uh, the sample district for our demonstration. So I'm logging in as the treasurer. Once you're logged in, uh, you will be taken to the home page here. It looks just like this. And you need to click My Account. Upon clicking My Account, you'll notice that you have three tabs. Personal Info, this is your personal profile, uh, loading all of your trainings, committee and roles that you are uh, on with OSBA, anything that you've attended before, you can print a full history report and so forth. We also have a subscriptions tab which we'll get to later where you can manage your paid and unpaid subscriptions and then also the roster tab which we'll be spending most of our time. If you look at this tab uh, the first thing you'll see is a checklist. These are items that OSBA needs you to either confirm or change in order to ensure that we have the latest information for your district. So, so things such as confirm or change your district information, superintendent, treasurer, board members, assign roles to board president, vice president, student achievement liaison, and so forth. Uh, transportation manager. With OSBA's transportation services, we want to know who is the contact person in your district who's handling your transportation operation so that we may reach out to them. Uh, all other district administrators want to confirm their information and then uh, confirm or change designees uh, to edit roster information. This is where you can uh, set somebody to um, log in instead of the treasurer to manage this exact process. Uh, you'll notice on the side here, and I'm going to go ahead and click one of these, that uh, once you've completed a task that doesn't have a link, you can check uh, I've completed this task. Upon doing that, it's going to uh, mark that completed and also list who completed it and when. That way, if you do have multiple people coming in, you know who did it. So your goal, uh, especially during the beginning of the year after your organizational meeting, is to work down through this list, get all your green check marks, and then we will have all the information we need in order to um, service your district properly throughout the year. Okay, one of the big things that uh, uh, you, you would need to do with this application is to remove or add a new superintendent or a new treasurer. Uh, it's very simple and we'll, we'll look at this uh, right now. By clicking edit you can edit the uh, information, contact information of your superintendent or your treasurer. This form is the same for everybody. You can also add the contact information for your board members. Simply come down here, change a phone number perhaps. So let's say this change to this. Uh, let's say a new email was set. Okay. Work phone, um, ethnicity, gender. We also ask if you we have permission to you, uh, send you text messages. Um, this is something that uh, we'll be rolling out in the coming years as far as um, uh, marketing things to you via SMS so you can manage that. And then we also allow you to manage which newsletters you'd like. 
So if you're getting a fax in a flash and you don't really want it, you do not have to simply stop getting all emails from OSBA. You can come in here and take yourself off of just fax in a flash. And this list will be constantly updated as new newsletters come out that you have access to. Also notice throughout the application you'll see question marks. These will give little helpful pop-ups to allow you to see what this is all about. Once you click Submit, we're going to take you back to your screen here, and um, you'll be all set. Okay, the process to remove. In order to remove or change your superintendent, you want to click on the Remove link. Uh, let's look at this warning up here. There's a couple steps to this process, uh, and so, so things will not be final till you hit Submit. You have a couple options here. Add a new dis superintendent to the district. Uh, if that someone is coming in fresh from outside the district, you'd want to select this option. This allows you to populate the data uh, and put in a brand new person. You can also select the su new superintendent from an existing roster. Anybody we have on file, uh, let's say a principal is being promoted to superintendent, you would select this option in order to uh, go select that principal. There's no need to add them twice since we already have them on file. You also need to choose what are we going to do with the former superintendent, the one that's currently in office. You can either remove them, which is probably the most popular choice, or you can keep them on the roster and select a new role. So perhaps they are going into a supervisory role or taking another role in the district. Down here we have an effective date. Uh, this defaults to today's date, which means it's effective immediately. However, you can backdate and also uh, set it in the future. So if you have a new superintendent not starting till June, feel free to set that uh, into the future. What we will do is uh, keep track of that and not process that change and make it live until June. However, we still will note it in your dashboard here that you've changed it and this uh, person is going to start on June 10th. So let me go ahead and show you one example here of um, setting this. We're going to go ahead and uh, set this in the future. And let's just select someone new to make it easy, someone existing. So I'm going to select Drew Clark, continue. Okay. You can, um, this is the same form again, and if you were to add a new person, you would be filling out all this info. Uh, this is for you to basically confirm that all their info is correct. You may want to add their cell phone or their work phone, uh, change their email if their role is changing, um, and that kind of thing. I do want to point out that you do need an email address in order to... Um, log into the website so it's important to uh, put this email in. Okay. I'm going to continue. This is a screen to confirm all the information that you've put in and also to confirm that it's effective on June 10th and we hit submit. Okay. So as you can see, Andrew Clark is still a superintendent. Drew Clark, I probably should pick a different name, uh, is assumes this role in 610 pending OSBA verification. What does this mean? OSBA needs to verify that um, that Drew Clark does not exist elsewhere in our records. Uh, we want to make sure that we have all the information correct, all the subscriptions correct. So we take a look at every change and um, update it accordingly. Once OSBA verifies it, then this yellow box and this verification message here uh, will go away. This will not happen uh, officially until 610, however. Let's take a look at the treasurer. We'll go through the same process, but do an immediate change. We're going to add a brand new treasurer and keep the other one on the roster, make him a principal. Okay, we'll keep Chris there. And we're going to make that change immediate. We'll hit continue. And let's add a new change. Okay. 
We're only going to do the fields that are required. We are going to add an email here. And set the ethnicity and gender. The reason the, we require these to set, we have different committees and, and groups that meet um, addressing some of the issues that are specific, and so we want to be able to track those. All right, we verify our information is effective immediately. GRUI is uh, going to be in principle. We have a new treasure we're adding, and we click Submit. Now you notice we come back here, and let's take a look. We did not uh, mark I've completed this task. However, it has updated. For the simple reason that you went into these boxes, confirmed, and hit Submit, you can see here that the system already sensed that and marked it completed. So here we have our new treasure, new treasure sample, pending OSBA verification. If we scroll down here, we have Chris Gruy, who is the former. He's going to be a principal pending verification. This means that as soon as we verify, which takes one to two days, this yellow box will go away and your changes will be permanent until you move to change again. So that is how to remove uh, a superintendent or change a superintendent treasurer. Uh, the same goes for board members. You, it's this exact same process. You notice here that there is a cancel. If we click the cancel button, uh, the changes that we've made, as long as they're not verified yet, you can actually back out, put Andrew Clark back. We can hit cancel on the treasurer and put Chris Gruy back as the treasurer. We also ask that you go in and edit your district data. This, this is where you would update your address, uh, your website, and when your board meets. And you notice by doing that, the district information check list item was marked completed. A couple more things to cover with you. Assign board member roles. We do ask that um, you indicate who is your president, vice president, legislative liaison, achievement liaison. If you've forgotten what those are, there's a helpful reminder here of uh, what that role entails. And so you come in here, select the board member from the list <coughs> of uh, who is taking that role after your organizational meeting. If you don't see your board member listed, then you'll need to click the link, return to the roster. So we'll do that now. Come in here and remove whichever board member is incorrect and add the new board member. After you do that, you will then be prompted to assign the board member roles. A Couple more things. Uh, you can add as many people as you would like <coughs> to your bucket here of, of people. There is no limit. Uh, you can add directors, principals, system principals, any kind of person uh, that you would like to receive subscriptions, uh, briefcase, school management news or that you would like OSBA just to keep track of uh, so that when you uh, interact with us and uh, they give us a call or maybe that you'd like them to have a website login, you can do that by clicking add a new person. Designate an editor for roster. If you're the treasurer, you have the option to pick someone else in the district to see what you see. And this is where you do it. You can choose as many people as you'd like to do so, once this is checked and submit is clicked, when that person logs in, they will have the option of seeing these two tabs, roster and subscriptions. So as you go down through here, uh, you'll need to confirm or change and e either click I've completed the task or actually go into the box and then it'll mark it complete. Final thing to cover with you is subscriptions. Once your district indicates that they would like briefcase or SMN via your invoice, you can come in here and manage briefcase subscriptions or school management new subscriptions. My sample district has only subscribed to briefcase. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And this will list everybody in the district in one place. Now you'll notice that some of the folks here have a question mark next to them. And there's no option not to uh, uh, to, to, to stop getting briefcase. Uh, this is because we think the importance of the publication needs to go to your core admin team, superintendent, treasurer, board members. And so uh, via this uh, web application, there's not an option to click none. However, if you are paying 
or briefcase, then you can mark them to get it via the mail. Uh, otherwise, email is your option. Now you notice here Drew Clark, who is a principal, is marked none. You can then come in here and mark them email or mail. As you go and mark your mail recipients, if you're paying for that, you'll notice that this countdown keeps track of how many you have left. You can mark up to 15 people to get the briefcase or SMN via uh, U.S. mail, uh, printed copy, if you will. You can mark an unlimited number of people to get it via email. This concludes the tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact OSBA, specifically uh, Ann Herrett at 614-540-4000 uh, or 1-800-589-OSBA. You can also click the feedback link, send us feedback at the bottom of the website and put your question in there and we'd be happy to uh, get back with you and answer it. Or if you have any suggestions for the new application, we'd be uh, open to hearing those as well. Thank you.